Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our May 5th uh, Board of Education meeting. And at this time, I'd like to recognize Mr. Travis Day for the pledge and invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, justice for all. Please bow your heads. Dear God, we're thankful for this day that we've been given for its blessings and its opportunities. We pray, pray for wisdom, strength, and guidance as we make decisions about the education of our children, especially in these crazy and abnormal times. So maybe we challenge to give our best always, and maybe it, may we be assured of your presence with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Travis. <clears throat> All right. As everyone is aware, uh, this is Teacher Appreciation Week. And we have a resolution here I'd like to read for consideration of a motion and a second. Uh, the Carter County Board of Education res resolution recognizing the week of May 4th, 2020 as Teacher Appreciation Week. Whereas teachers mold future citizens through guidance and education, and whereas teachers encounter students of widely differing backgrounds, and whereas our county's, excuse me, our country's future depends upon quality, providing quality education to all students, and whereas teachers spend countless hours preparing lessons, evaluating progress, counseling, and coaching students, and performing, performing community service, and whereas our community recognizes and supports its teachers in educating the children of this community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Carteret County Board of Education proclaims May 4th through 8th, 2020 to be Teacher Appreciation Week, and be it further resolved that the Carteret County Board of Education strongly encourages all members of our community to join with it and personally expressing appreciation to all teachers for their dedication and devotion to their work. And I would be happy to accept uh, a motion to approve that resolution. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Godwin. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Second by Travis. All those in favor, I'll... raise your hand or say aye. Aye. Unanimous. And just quickly, I'd like to say, uh, I think we all recognize uh, how much our teachers do in a normal environment. And for the past uh, six or eight weeks, uh, some of the things that they've been doing and having to learn and adapt just speaks volumes uh, of what kind of teachers that we have and what kind of teachers there are around the state and country. So I'd just like to express my appreciation. I would like, can you hear me? Yes. I would also like to uh, extend the appreciation of all the mothers and fathers and grandparents and guardians in the county who have had to um, get a little taste of what all the teachers have in trying to um, teach their children from home and um, partner with the teachers. I think they now appreciate more than ever what our teachers do for their, our children. I agree. Thank you, Melissa. All right. In that case, we will move on. Uh, we'll consider the approval of the meeting agenda night. Is there a motion to approve the meeting agenda? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair. Motion by Mr. Godwin. Second. I will second the motion. Second by Ms. Wheatley. All those in favor, say aye or raise your right hand. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. And public comment. I believe we have uh, one uh, public comment. Mr. Probst, would you read that for us? Yes. Uh, this is a, a comment that came from someone uh, just recently. Um, I'm going to read it for this person. 
The person's name is Mary Ann, and I am going to butcher this last name. It's G-R-I-G-O-R-I-C-I-U-C. Gregoric. I, I, that's the best I can do. But thankfully, the rest of it's easy to read, so I'll read it to you. I wanted to take a minute to share a few of my thoughts for the upcoming special board meeting tomorrow. I would like to express my appreciation to the teachers of Carteret County during our current global health crisis. They have risen to the challenge of continuing to provide quality education, engage students, support parents, and offer social emotional support to their students. I also express this gratitude to the administration who supports the teachers, the support staff who continue to provide guidance and counseling to the students and look for ways to keep them connected, and the food service staff who continue to make sure children are fed each day. I cannot express enough my appreciation for their dedication to the children of Carteret County. I would also like to take a moment to express our further gratitude for the teachers, administrators, and counselor of Mast Early College High School. They have gone above and beyond to make the transition to online learning for their students so smoothly and with supports needed. They have maintained engagement, taken exceptional lengths to keep students connected to one another and feel supported. Personal calls to families have been made to ensure that students' social and emotional well-being is healthy during these unprecedented times. As a parent who is most concerned with about this need, I cannot express to you enough that this means enough what this means to me and my family. The Mass School has always been and remains a school that not only assists students in their academic and vocational training needs, but their overall well-being. I have been I have seen firsthand how the quarantine has affected the social emotional needs of each member of my family, and have been so grateful to the, for the support my son has received from his teachers, counselor, and principal, and know this person personal investment in his success and well-being has helped him navigate the struggles during the during his first year of high school and during the quarantine orders. While I realize these sentiments have been expressed in the past at Board of Education meetings from numerous parents and students, I hope the board will continue to recognize and support this unique, cooperative, innovative high school and its students. Kind regards, and again, this is Mary and Gregorich. Thank you, Blair, and thank you, Mary Ann. I won't try the last name, but thank you for that. Okay, moving on to um, the consent agenda. Assume everybody has had an opportunity to look over that. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion by Mr. Jenkins. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Godwin. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please raise your right hand or say aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. All right, policy first read, Mr. Probst, if you'd walk us through this. I will. So the policies before you are for first read. Um, the majority of these policies come from the spring 2020 North Carolina School Board Association packets, update packet. And these policies do not directly respond to the COVID-19 matters. However, these policies were developed or revised due to their relevance or potential relevance to the COVID-19 response or to future similar situations. Just to highlight some of the policies, policy 2127 is board member technology use. This will be a new policy. This is a new policy that addresses issues that arise when board members use social issue, school issue technology email or personal social media for system related communication. Much of the policy reflects the requirements that we have for employees under policy 7320 technology responsible use and 7335 employee use of social media. I know I've spoken to Mr. Whitford about this and he intends to make at least a few modifications to the policy before next read. Another policy to note is 2302 remote participation in board meetings. Um, the revision very simply provides more detail to what we have here today. It cites our current situation as a reason for allowing board members to participate remotely. It also provides a specific clause for full electronic board meetings. Basically, it is, it is just to keep up with our current practice. 
And then lastly, also included is a revised, revised version of the High School Athletic Code of Ethics and Standards. Mr. Whitford has revised the regulation to address some of the concerns we encountered last year. It is very comprehensive and fills in some gaps. Um, our principals and athletic directors have all reviewed the document and have given it their approval. And I'll be happy to answer any questions I can about any of those policies. Again, they're for first read. Blair, is it possible for that, um, the Athletic Code of Ethics and Standards, or Blair or Neil, that, um, you know, I know with a lot of the other um, policies, when there have been revisions, we see the, the markouts and the edits, we, we see the, um, any of the changes that are made and the additions. Is it possible that we could receive that in the document as well so we can kind of see what has changed since the last time? Uh, Blair, I'll respond to that. And my internet signal is weak, so if I cut in and out, I apologize. Uh, uh, Travis, I will try to do that, but this is such a comprehensive rewrite. It may, the, the, it may look completely red uh, in terms of the revisions, but I will try to do that and send it to you. Can um can can maybe right now in the meantime too maybe can you um can somebody give us a, a few of the highlights as far as some of the changes? Is my audio holding up? Yeah. Yes. The. All right. I'll do. I'll do the best that I can. Um. We define student athlete very broadly. Um, and uh, that, that has been uh, a, a practice of administrators to define student athlete very broadly, but we have done that now in, uh, in this version of the policy. Um, we are maintaining the requirement that, that all criminal charges, including juvenile petitions against student athletes be self-reported to a coach or an administrator. And that is a separate and distinct part of this policy, the self-reporting requirement. We are keeping the uh, games and athletic um, uh, consequences, the suspensions, if you will, for violations of the code of student conduct uh, with one exception. And that exception is that um, under the old version, the, the student athlete, uh, if he was suspended more than three times, then he would be disqualified from uh, participation in interscholastic, interscholastic sports for 365 days. We moved that down to more than two out of school suspensions. Um, uh, thinking that uh, a, a student doesn't really need four strikes. Three strikes should be enough. The, let's see what else we have. Um, there is a relaxation of the um, games suspension for minor misdemeanor criminal activities. Um, uh, originally or, or up until now, any essentially any misdemeanor criminal activity would result in games suspension, but that will no longer be the case. Um, we, we've always tried to exempt relatively minor uh, criminal matters, um, but it, it, we, we did not want to leave that to the discretion of administrators. And now, while it, the policy doesn't say it per se, a class three misdemeanor or less will not result in any uh, suspension from extracurricular uh, sports. Now, now a class three misdemeanor or, or less, and there are a lot of them, but examples would be fish, fishing license violations. 
that will not carry any games suspension. Um, the class three misdemeanors have uh, penalties of 20 days or less of jail time and some minor fine. And there are a considerable number of them, but a fishing license violation is a good example of that. Um, however, infractions involving drug or alcohol off campus, drug or alcohol, they still will carry games suspension. Um, then what, what we have done is to give the school administrators an opportunity to reduce the total number of games suspensions by half uh, with some type of um, mitigating uh, mitigation of the penalties. And the example would be um, that, uh, that with, with uh, the consent of the principal and the superintendent, and we wanted the superintendent to be involved in this so that all the schools will be kind of applying the same rule. Um, a principal could give a student athlete some community service around school or a research or writing assignment or some other mitigating uh, uh, effort to, for a student to reduce the, the game suspension penalty by up to half. Um, now, with respect to self with all criminal charges off campus, including juvenile petitions, all of them have got to be reported. Um, even if it is a criminal charge that will not involve a games suspension. But what we did is if a, if a student fails to self-report one of these minor misdemeanor charges that would not carry a game suspension, then the penalty for self-reporting would only be, um, if my memory is correct, what, what uh, the game suspension would be for an in-school suspension. And uh, so it's, it's very, very minor. Um, however, a failure to self-report a more serious misdemeanor or a drug and alcohol offense will essentially double the, the penalty for the original charge. Um, so that's, that's an overview of what the changes are. Um, we, we, um, we did the mitigation because one of the principals asked for that authority. Um, and then we just wanted to do clarity. We wanted to close any loopholes and we wanted to um, do what we could to preclude totally legalistic arguments about the application of this particular policy. Neil, if I, if I may, one, one other item that we put in there was mm -hmm. to make sure that coaches still had discretion to make decisions about their team as well. Because um, as long as teams have been evolved um, in sports, as long as we've had sports, coaches still maintain the ability to make a decision about, hey, I know what this says, but I want you off my team, or I want you to do more than that. And that's the decision the coach gets to have. Yeah, that, that is included in this policy. Neil, uh, did you say that, that the principal could break it down to community service for one of those misdemeanor crimes to enable that student to still participate? A, a principal could do that and then reduce the number of games suspension by half. There still will be games suspension. Right, but okay. The, but the principal can reduce the total number by half. Okay, okay. So you still have the three, three strikes and out policy. Well, yeah, yeah, there will be three strikes. I believe on three strikes and you're out, there'll be no mitigation. I, I think that that's in there. Okay, so that's for the rest of you, that'd be whatever time it happened, 365 days until the following year when that period came up. That's correct. 
Okay, thank you. Blair, did I hear you say that this was vetted by principals and athletic directors? Yes, we gave a copy to both our athletic directors and principals, gave them some time to to get back to us. I did hear from some principals, uh, and then I did hear from at least one AD, uh, and they were all fine with it. Okay, Mr. Just, Chairman, yes, Mr. Chairman, we also met with the principals and the athletic directors. We didn't meet with this policy in hand, but we met with them and just talked about it in general. Okay, and this is obviously for first read, so, so no action taken tonight, but, but we will have uh, at least a month to look over it. Right. This is That's statewide, true. right? Correct, Neil? This is statewide? No, no uh, um, Jake, it's not statewide. This is, uh, this is I'm not going to say unique to um, Carteret County, uh, because some, some of language we pulled out of the University of North Carolina system and some of the handbooks for student athletes at the university level. Um, other other school boards are considering these kinds of policies, but this one, is, as far as I know, is unique to Carter County. Okay. So that means all, all the schools would have to rewrite that previous old rule over to change it to this if it gets if we vote uh on the third time around uh that is correct they they will change their um student handbooks um for next year if the board uh, adopts this policy or something similar to this policy okay Are there any other questions on any of these policies on the sports policy, uh, what were you saying about the superintendent? When would he be involved? If, if the principal of a school wants to allow a student athlete to perform some community service or do a research and writing assignment or, or something like that to mitigate the number of games suspension, that'll have to be approved by the superintendent. And the reason, the reason is to keep it consistent across the, the three high schools with uh, athletic teams. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Proach and Mr. Whitford. All right, we're gonna receive an update on Mass to Early College High School. Uh, Mr. Paler, and I think you've got Dr. Dietzler um, available as well. Correct, Dr. Dietzler's gonna share the update. Well, good evening to you, and thank you for spending your Cinco de Mayo with the school board, I appreciate that. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to say thank you um, for all of your help. I know some of you have gotten volunteers and have been working yourselves in school kitchens, packing lunches and all that, and it's, it's very much appreciated. Um, my update tonight is very brief, only because since March 13th, we have been a little busy trying to figure other things out, but um, for what it's worth, I have two updates for you. First on the application process and then second on the budget process. Um, so as far as the application process goes, we started visiting schools and handing applications to every eighth grade student um, in February and in um, early, early March. And at that time, um, all schools were visited and all students had the opportunity to obtain a paper application, the same application that you had um, looked at last fall that we revised. Um, due to the COVID-19 and the release of students on March 13th, the application deadline was extended to March 30th and subsequently a digital application was put on the website just in case there was a student somewhere who lost it, missed it, didn't get it into the school prior to everybody going home. Um, 
since then, all the applications have been reviewed and we examined those applications for the focus areas of study, the trades and what the students wanted to study and also for the first generation information. After the applications were applied with the rubric point system, the students were then listed uh, according to highest to lowest points. And um, at that time, or at this time, the applications are now in the hands of the principal at Mass, Deanne Rosen, and she's just looking over the essays and the writing. Now the essays and writing had nothing really to do with the rubric or the point system. It was just kind of like, why, why do you want to attend? Just so we could get a feel for who these students were. Um, and that's where we are with the application process. We haven't moved, we haven't invited, we haven't done anything else, um, partly because we've been super, super busy and um, we have to spend a little bit of time um, processing the paperwork and moving it from hand to hand with a 14 day, you know, kind of like semi paper quarantine, not a 14 day, but just enough time to make sure the germs are killed. Um, as far as the budget process goes, at this time, we still haven't seen a budget for 2019-2020. Um, and so while we wait for that, now that the legislation's back in business, um, we are also anticipating a 2020-2021 budget. So we, we're at the same point we were just waiting for the budget to pass. Um, that's basically where it is, be, just because of the circumstance of where we are right now in our focus is really trying to get our kids and our schools on the same page with the digital distance learning and COVID-19. Well, and this was just an update tonight. There's obviously no action, but does anyone have any questions for Dr. Dietzler? Well, Dr. Dietzler, thank you for being here tonight sure. and happy Cinco de Mayo to you. Thank you and um, have a great evening. And again, thank you so much for um, all you do. And thank you for being part of the, um, the video if you were able. It was appreciated. The teachers really enjoyed it. Well, thank you. Thanks for what you're doing. Thank you. All right. We are now going to consider a resolution requesting county commissioners place a bond referendum on the November 2020 ballot. And uh, Mr. Paler, before I read the resolution, if you would um, briefly go over where we are and um, briefly mention some of the projects. Hey, do you want me to run through all the projects, Chairman? Um, not, not in detail. Um, maybe if okay. you go to my school and hit some of the highlights. Um, I'll, I'll, the schools are alphabetical, and I'll just hit the highlights of the project. So at Atlantic Elementary, we, we would replace the interior uh, classroom doors with new code compliant doors. At Beaufort Middle School, um, there's an existing walkway from the main building back to the eighth grade building. We would close that in. We would replace the ceiling in the main building, and we would construct the covered walkway to the car drop off line. At Bogstown Elementary, we would, we would replace the HVAC system um, from a two-pipe system to a four-pipe system, and that would that's done to improve dehumidification and efficiency. Um, we would also construct the covered walkway from that school back to Croatan High School. Broad Creek Middle School, we would construct the 14 classroom addition. We would remove the curved walls in the cafeteria to allow for more seating and also improve security. We would construct the covered walkway from the bus park uh, to the bus parking lot. We would construct a new entry and exit driveway that would be east of the school. Um, that would be to improve safety on Highway 24. We would also resurface the track. At the Carteret Preschool Center, we would tear down the old house portion that is there and we would replace it with an activity building. At Croatan High School, we would construct the 16 classroom addition. We would construct the freestanding gym for school and community use. And that would be with bleachers on one side, uh, restroom, storage, and office space. And it would also be shelter ready uh, with generators or with a generator, showers, and a serving line. Um, and that would be in, in case we needed a uh, storm shelter. We would also construct six new tennis courts there. 
and to continue with Croatan, we would convert that school also from a two pipe system to a four pipe system, uh, HVAC wise, and we would replace the football press box. At Down East Middle School and Smyrna Elementary School, we would enclose the existing walkway from the main building back to the elementary building and over to the cafeteria. That would be for uh, safety and security reasons. We would also install a new exhaust hood in the kitchen. We would construct a covered walkway to the car drop-off line, and that would be at the rear of the school, and we would construct a, a covered walkway to the bus drop-off line pickup area at the front of the school. East Carter High School, we would upgrade and improve and modernize their athletic facilities, and that would be, uh, that may include relocating some of the fields, constructing six new tennis courts, um, and it would also may include rearranging and relocating the band practice field. We would enclose existing uh, walkways between the two main buildings. We would construct an auditorium addition with dressing rooms, prop storage, and workspace areas, and that would be behind the stage. We would construct free, uh, another freestanding gym uh, for, similar to that of Croatan. You will notice that East Carter freestanding gym costs more than Croatan and the West Carter, and that would be uh, solely because of the ground that it's built on. We would also resurface the track of East Carter and we would uh, pave the activity bus and auxiliary parking lot. At Harpers Island Elementary School, we would construct a, a front entry canopy and walkways, enclose existing uh, walkway from the main building back to the gym. We would replace the interior doors with, with new code compliant doors and construct a covered walkway to the bus parking lot. At our maintenance and transportation building, we would renovate their HVA system uh, to a more efficient system. And we would construct a storage building for equipment so that the equipment can be stored indoors instead of outdoors as it is now. At Moorhead City Elementary School, we would install a security fence on the north side of campus. We would construct a masonry entryway at the front of the school and enclose that hallway on those outside classrooms. We would renovate the main entry to the office. We would install a new exhausted in the kitchen, pave the faculty parking lot, and construct the covered walkway to the bus parking lot. <clears throat> At Moorhead Middle School, we would also upgrade that HVA system from a two-pipe system to a four-pipe system. We would enclose a walk, the walk, uh, the existing walkway from the main building to the cafeteria and classroom buildings with masonry and fencing. We would also construct the covered walkway to the car drop-off and pickup area. At Moorhead City Primary, we would pave the employee parking and improve the bus parking lot. At Newport Elementary School, we would replace the roof on the cafeteria, uh, construct the covered walkway to the left of the main entrance, we would renovate the ceilings and exterior walls in the kindergarten building. We would construct an enclosed hallway from the main building to the cafeteria building with access to the bus parking lot. And we'd also construct an enclosed hallway from the kindergarten building back to the cafeteria. At Newport Middle School, we would construct a covered walkway from uh, the main building back to the bus parking lot. At West Carter High School, we would expand the existing locker rooms. We would construct a new band room replace the interior doors with new co-compliant doors. We would construct a, another freestanding gym there. We would replace the chilled water piping in the HVAC system. And at the same time we did that, we would heat and air condition the hallways. We would construct the dining room addition with restrooms, install a new exhaust hood and renovate the ceiling in the kitchen. We would convert the existing six science classrooms into regular classrooms. And then we would construct a new addition with six science classrooms. We would upgrade and improve and modernize the athletic fields there. We would renovate and update the, update the auditorium. We would construct a new bus parking lot behind the school and resurface the track. At White Oak Elementary School, we would renovate the main entrance and office area for safety. We would replace the gym there with a multi-purpose gymatorium, and that would include restrooms, storage areas, a stage and bleachers, and we would connect it to the existing corridor. We would also renovate the restrooms in the two older uh, classroom halls.
There was also, um, there would also be a land acquisition uh, for a new elementary school in the county. And there would also be a safety and security at all sites. And that would be in installation of security doors and access controls and also a new intercom system. Uh, so that would be voice over IP and that's for safety. There's also a, an item for uh, the bond uh, issuance cost and the bond construction management cost. And that would total uh, $41,885,000. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Paler. I know that's the, uh, well, I don't even know how many times you've looked over that list. I've been involved uh, with the school system for five years and we've been talking about a lot of these capital needs since then. And so I'm, I'm very pleased uh, to have gotten it to this point. And uh, I'd like to read the resolution now and then consider a motion uh, to approve it. This is the Carter County Board of Education resolution requesting the County Board of Commissioners to fund the school system's capital needs. Whereas the Carter County Board of Education has identified essential capital needs in schools across the county, and whereas these identified needs focus on safety, expansion, and efficiency, and whereas the Board of Education has worked closely with law enforcement, school administrators, and maintenance leaders to identify the top priority needs of our school system, and whereas these needs have been discussed with the Carter County Board of Commissioners, and whereas it is the belief of the Board of Education that these needs represent a reasonable and conservative approach to meeting the education and instructional facility needs of the public school system, and whereas to fund those capital needs, the Board of Education desires the Carter County Board of Commissioners seek voter approval for general obligation bonds at the November 2020 general election. Now be it resolved as follows. The Board of Education formally requests that the Carter County Board of Commissioners place a referendum on the ballot in November 2020 for the authorization of the issuance of general obligation school bonds in the amount of $41,885,000 for the purpose of providing funds for the capital cost of improving, renovating, replacing, and equipping school facilities, including without limitation school buildings, safety and security measures, maintenance, transportation facilities, athletic and physical education facilities, and acquiring land future school needs and other other necessary rights in land in the Carter County school system and authorizing the levy of taxes in an amount sufficient to pay the principal and interest in said bonds. I would consider a motion at this point. Mr. Chairman, I will make the motion to to approve so said bond motion. Great, thank you. I'll say it. So mo motion by Mr. Jenkins, second by Mr. Godwin. All those in favor, raise your right hand or say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you very much. There's been a lot of uh, hard work that's gone into this by the administrators, by the, the board and um, I'm extremely pleased to have gotten it to this point uh, with everyone's help. So thank you all. All right. Ms. Carswell, uh, we have a budget revision number four. Yes, I'd like to present uh, budget revision number four. And this includes only state budget revision. Uh, the first item is appropriating the funds received for technology interest for January through February of $1,188. The second item is appropriate additional funds received for developmental day slots that we received in an amount of 47956 
Uh, the third item is transfer of textbook signs for purchase of non-state adopted textbooks and digital resources for $50,599. And the final item is appropriate the COVID-19 supplemental funding that was received from the state. The total amount of this supplemental funding is $223,913 for a total budget revision of $323. 656. Any questions? Any questions? Is there a motion to approve the budget revision number four as presented? Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion. Motion by Ms. Ehlers. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Godwin. All those in favor, raise your right hand or say aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Carswell. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Paler, uh, facility support operations update. Uh, yes, sir. Um, so when the governor closed schools in March, the county commissioners were kind enough to uh, let us get started on some capital projects and I have a report for you on kind of where those projects stand. Uh, we were going to paint three schools and those were Atlantic Elementary, Harpers Island Elementary and Bridges. Right now Bridges is about 90% complete. Harpers Island, um, they're just getting started there so they're about 10% complete and Atlantic Elementary is roughly 60% complete. At Broad Creek Middle School, there was a flooring project where they uh, were gonna replace the floor in the dining room and the band room. That project is complete. There were three gym floor uh, projects at Beaufort Elementary School. That project is about 60% complete. At Newport Elementary School, that project is about halfway complete. And the same thing at Bogestown Elementary, that project is 50% complete. At Moorhead Middle School, there was a project of widening the uh, exit driveway, and that is in progress. At Newport Elementary School, there was another paving project for, uh, for the driveway and, and parking lot, and that is also in progress. At Newport Middle School, there was a door upgrade to make it ADA compliant. And those materials have been ordered and we're waiting on those to get here so that we can get started on that project. And then there were five HVAC uh, system upgrades. Those were at Harkers Island, Newport, Smyrna, Beaufort Middle School and Moorhead City Primary School. And those are all, they have all been ordered and we're waiting on the equipment to get here so that we can get those projects complete. Any questions on those? Thank you for all your work on that. And please make sure you pass that along to uh, Kenny and his entire staff. Absolutely. You wanna move into your comments? Sure. I have a, a list of comments it is the time of year of this National uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, as, as we read the resolution earlier. And uh, on any given normal year, we really appreciate teachers. Um, but, but this year, I can't thank them for n enough for, for what they've done in transitioning to online learning and remote learning and, and the hard work they've put in for, so that our kids can continue to learn. So. We really appreciate them. Today is actually uh, National Teachers Day. So this is out, out of the whole week, this is, this is the day that we really celebrate the teachers. Uh, last Friday was National Principals Day. I would also like to take the time to thank the principals for all the hard work they've done during this time and for their leadership. Uh, Friday was also uh, School Lunch Hero Day. And uh, I, again, we, we talked about it last meeting, but really like to extend a, a Thank you to our cafeteria workers and those people that are involved in getting our kids fed during this time, uh, a much needed service, and we really appreciate that. Um, it is also a National School Nurse Day tomorrow, and we really uh, appreciate what our nurses do in our schools. Um, I'd like to appreciate, I'd like to, to say thank you to 
all those that worked on the bond projects. And, and if I started naming names, I, I know it would leave some people out, but uh, that would include you, the board members, for, for the, the, the time that you spent on this, and, and Kenny and Keith and, and Matt and, and all those that have been involved. Uh, thank you for, for all you did to, to make that happen. And um, hopefully that uh, we'll get that passed and, and onto the ballot. And uh, yesterday, or last night, there was a message sent out uh, to all families about online learning. And that message was that the school buildings are closed, but school is still happening. And, and I really encourage parents and kids to continue to learn. It's more important than a grade right now. What you're learning is very necessary to take into next school year. And the more you learn now, the less behind you will be next year. So please continue to do your online learning. That's all I have, Chairman. Mr. Paler, I don't want to put you on the spot, but but would you mind very, very briefly uh, going over what the state has pushed down as far as grading for um, the different uh, grade levels, elementary, middle, uh, high school, and then our seniors? Is that something you could do relatively quickly? I'll give you a brief overview. Um, for, for kindergarten through fifth grade, th there will be no grades assigned. So instead, teachers will give feedback to uh, individual students on their progress for the year. Um, there's also a note in there that they would make, uh, they would note uh, socio-emotional and um, feedback, academic and socio-emotional feedback so that uh, to, for placement in, in next year in classes and for feedback for next year's teacher. Um, for middle school, Middle school students basically get a, a, a PC-19 or a WC-19, which means a pass-fail, and that's based on the March 13th grade. And it, it, if a student was failing as of March the 13th, they could continue to do online work until that grade was passing and they could get a PC-19. If they got a WC-19, basically that's not a fail. That just means that and I think if I said pass fail, that's not correct. It's a pass withdrawal. So there's no failing, but kids could take a WC-19 and it basically says they were not um, proficient in, in that subject area, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to fail their grade. And in high school, kids can take an option. So when we get to the end of the school year, kids will be given the option to take a pass grade or a WC-19, which means a withdrawal grade, which means that it doesn't count against their GPA, but it doesn't give them credit for the class. If they take a pass, that means that they get credit for the class, but it doesn't count toward their GPA. The other option is they could take a numeric grade, and that numeric grade is based on their grade as of March the 13th, or their grade at the end of the online learning and they would get to choose. They would get the, the higher of the two grades. And if they choose to take the numeric grade, then it does count toward their GPA. That, that's in a nutshell. Uh, is any questions? Yes, yeah, seniors are different. Now, when I said high school, that means uh, ninth through eleventh grade. So the seniors were have already gotten their information, and, and that, that's been communicated to every senior. Thank you. Richie are, you, Richie, are you satisfied with these options? Do you think this is a fair um, opportunity for our students? I'll say I think the state did everything they could to make sure that there was no harm done during this time. Um, they've given a, a lot of leniency uh, to students. And um, the only thing that, that I'll say, I wish that they had waited a little longer to 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 announced so that kids would be more engaged after you know once they found out they got the march grade then i'm afraid that some of them uh, maybe have aren't trying as hard now as, as they would be if they didn't know that but but other than that i think that it's very lenient towards students and i think that it should be so that so that this pandemic doesn't hurt their gpas thank you richard yes ma'am 
Thank you for that. I know I've gotten a bunch of calls about it, and I'm sure everybody else has. And uh, so I appreciate you um, going through that. And there, there is a, um, a, a one pager on the website uh, and on our Facebook page that kind of goes through and explains it in a nutshell. Great. All right. Thank you. All right. Board comments. So I don't miss anybody. I'm going to go down the line again. Um, Mr. Jenkins, number one. Fantastic. I hope everybody is having a great week. Um, uh, Teacher Appreciation Week and Teacher Appreciation Day. Uh, truly thankful for y'all. Uh, Chick-fil-A uh, spent some time yesterday at Moorhead Middle passing out uh, lunch to all the teachers, uh, the Moorhead City teachers. I think they're getting to the other school, uh, school districts this week. But uh, thank you to, for Chick-fil-A and our, um, our private industries who support our, our current uh, school system family. That's truly appreciated. I want to give uh, some special thanks to a couple of people. And this is uh, in rela relation to the food that we, we're able to get the kids. I want to thank Kristen Cook. She's with One Harbor Church. One Harbor has stepped up with multitudes of volunteers. I want to thank Waylon Bell with uh, First United Methodist Church of Moorhead City. They have covered uh, Newport for us um, this whole time. And I want to thank Mason Sterling who is bringing in students from West Carteret. And the students at West Carteret have uh, stood up to uh, volunteer to deliver food to you know their peers and work at these schools to make sure everybody gets fed. I think that um, I did some rough calculations. And I think by the time we finish this program that our school system is put together, we will have served almost a quarter of a million meals, which is a just amazing. So um, kudos to everybody who is part of that. The uh, nutritionists, the TAs, the bus drivers, the volunteers, the principals, teachers, all y'all. So thank y'all. Um, thank y'all for what you do. Um, and the last but not least, I want to thank the principals. So yesterday, I, I bring, bring up Chick-fil-A again. Yesterday, Travis and I had the opportunity to um, to spend an hour or two out there, you know, with the teachers while they're getting their lunches. And I guess it would be easy to just let Adam Olander be the point guy for handing out meals, but we had uh, principal, vice principal representatives from every school in the Moorhead area. And our, our, our people are engaged. They're engaged and they care. And it is just so heartwarming. They are, um, they care. And I, I, I'm just blessed to be, be sitting on this board with y'all and be part of this school system with everybody else who's in this school system. So thank y'all. Thank you, Clark. Uh, Mr. Godwin, I uh, just like to take time to uh, appreciate to all the teachers and administration, custodians, everybody for P Teacher Appreciation Week and all the things that they do. Uh, to uh, Kenny and his staff that works with the uh, facilities, uh, also appreciate to all the workers who are give, getting the lunches out to the students uh, during these times of this virus. Uh, anybody that has contributed, I also want to thank them for their time. And uh, just keep being safe. Wash your hands and keep trying to make do with what we can until uh, hopefully we can get this virus uh, and, and overcome. Thank you, Jake. Um, I got a nice little message just then that reminded me Travis has to cut off in uh, five minutes. So, uh, Travis, you want to jump in? Actually, I probably have to cut out now, but um, I'll do a super quick uh, um, echo what Clark and Jake said. Thank you guys very much. And thank you to all our teachers and our parents for putting up with all the craziness that we've been enduring for the past you know, month or more. So, every, you guys are great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. I got to go, but. but thanks, Travis. Thanks for what you're doing. All right, uh, Melissa, Miss Ehlers. Again, I'll try to make it as quick as possible, but um, at the top of my list really is the food and service employees 
who are preparing these meals, everyone who's volunteering, everyone in that chain. Um, I can't thank you enough for the um, stepping up with the um, some who took the stipend despite um, some of the safety concerns. So I, I thank you very much for doing that. Um, our teachers, um, you said it in our um, memorandum, they mold the future. They're, they look at children from different backgrounds. Um, they adapt and overcome in so many ways that we can never imagine the challenges that they're facing right now. Um, also for the bond, I hope that um, we get a monumental um, support in this community for it. The majority or a good portion of some of those changes are safety changes and the safety of our children come first. So um, I know we'll answer any questions going forward, but everyone in that bond effort, um, all the years in the making and um, the, the considerations, the conversations and the support from the county commissioners to our community and our uh, stakeholders, I appreciate your efforts in getting this referendum um, passed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melissa. Ms. Chadwick. Your um, microphone, Catherine. I want to thank all the teachers and staff of our system. We appreciate all that has been done during this trying time. Um, a shout out to all the meal delivery people. Um, they're doing a fabulous job. Um, on a small note, I want to say that homework, schoolwork are all work. And like any job, they can be hard. But please encourage your kids to work during this time. Um, I run into kids, you know, just about every day, a different kid who's all, they all tell me they'd rather be at school learning than at home. Um, but I think we all need to encourage them to stick with it, that it, it, it's going to pay off in the long run to do um, what's been asked of them. Um, so if everybody will encourage everybody, I think it'll make it a little bit easier. Um, and again, thank, thanks to everybody. Maybe one day our lives will all be back to normal and we can stop doing Zoom meetings. <laughs> yes, yes, no more Zoom. That would be great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine. All right, Ms. Wheatley. Um, I would just like to reiterate what everyone else has said. Um, I'd like to thank our teachers. And I'll think teacher appreciation, principal appreciation, or um, child nutrition appreciation could come at a better time um, for these folks to be acknowledged. Um, my children have told me multiple times this week that they miss their teachers. I miss their teachers even more. <laughs> and um, I, I think this year we all appreciate our teachers more, more than ever. Um, they wear many hats, their teachers, their counselors, their parents and family members when we're not there and, and they go above and beyond every single day. Um, I'd also like to thank Richie and Blair again. You guys have taken over the reins when we're really seeing what you guys are made of. Uh, I feel like the bottom fell out on you guys and, and everyone has come together and, um, and made sure that our children are still learning and have all the resources. And I really appreciate that. I hope everyone stays safe. I can't wait to see everyone in person. I am tired of being locked up in my house um, and I can't wait to see you guys again. Thank you, Brittany. And I am not gonna repeat what everybody said, but I do just wanna recognize all of our teachers out there. Um, you have the utmost respect from our board um, and we are lucky to have you uh, in this system. I do very briefly want to thank uh, every single one of you board members, uh, all the administrators, and if I try to name y'all, I miss somebody. Uh, Neil, uh, for all of your work uh, on getting uh, the bond resolution to this point. Uh, this has been years in the making, and um, I just can't express enough appreciation for all of your work behind the scenes. Um, I, and with that said, I would like to thank our county commissioners for uh, the partnership in getting those capital dollars to us uh, while we were out of school uh, to be able to work on some of those projects. So thank you. And with that said, our next meeting, I believe, help me with this, is June 2nd, 6 p.m. Does that sound right? And 
I hope everybody stays safe and look forward to seeing you in person. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion, Chairman. Mr. Godwin with the motion, a second. Second. Ms. Chadwick with a second. All those in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, thank you uh, for your time. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Good meeting, Good meeting all.